you. Get ready to receive his blessings. Somebody say, I'm ready to receive, Pastor. God does not promise you something that he does not keep. He guarantees you the blessings of the Lord that what? Make it you rich and add it no sorrow with it. Mm. How many have received the blessing and then it caused you sorrow? You've been in a, let me just remind you, you've been in a bad relationship. Oh, somebody. It was a blessing when it started out, wasn't it? But then it became very sorrowful. It caused you great pain and you had to, what? Pray your way out of that thing. But in the beginning, you asked God for it, didn't you? It was a blessing and you, you prayed God for it to change whoever it was, uh, whatever the situation was, and it did not transpire the way you thought it should have, and it became very sorrowful to you, painful and hurtful. But praise be to God that he is a savior and that he brought you up, out, and through it, and now you're better for it. In the name of Jesus, you're stronger and you're wiser. You can, oh, glory to God, you can now pursue. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You can now win and not lose. You can now succeed, I say, and not fail. You are blessed. Glory to God. The blessings, what? Of the Lord make it now, you rich, and add it. What? No sorrow with it. You have the experience and the patience and the virtue now to pursue, I say, and win. Glory to God. I don't know where that came from, but that was for somebody. And I thank God for it this morning. Glory to God. Saying, let me just go right to the word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about that double anointing. Glory to God. And how the oil, I say the oil, is so important to us in our anointing. Hallelujah. In our oil and our blessings. Because it is the anointing. The anointing is what, what breaks the yoke. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Jesus says, I will take on your burdens and make them light. I will take on your yoke and it will become easy for you. I will anoint you, hallelujah, to pursue, to persist and to prevail, hmm, to persevere. Glory to God. I love the Lord today hmm, and every day because of what he does in our lives, how he speaks to us, how he directs us, how when we think we're, we're not on track. Oh, somebody, I'm glad that he directs the paths and not me. Oh, somebody had had passed, but they did not work out the way you thought. They didn't, they didn't, oh, somebody, they didn't mature the way you thought. They didn't happen the way you thought. But see, you need to submit all of your ways, all of them, hallelujah, past, present, and all of those sins. Oh, glory to God and repent of them and then let God direct your paths. Mm, he will lead you into the righteousness for his name's sake and not yours. Oh, I'm so glad about that. I'm trying, I say to you, to get to the word, but hallelujah, this is for somebody. Somebody say, I received this this morning, Pastor. I need it. Oh, I understand, saints of God, I do. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit speaks, it is that thing that drives us. Glory to God. And I'm, again, excited about that. So let's just pray real quickly. God, anoint this word. Oh, Jesus, bless thy people. Oh. Thank you, Holy Ghost, all oh, for receiving, and not only receiving, but applying and believing the Word of God, knowing that it is miracles in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to talk to you today about the miracle of the anointed oil. And I say to you, if you have not received your oil, some of you have existing oil, and you probably need to add to it. You need only request it. You can simply text us to add to your existing oil mm. because we have been praying mightily in the spirit over this oil. We know it will manifest in your life and give you blessings, manifold blessings to destroy the enemy. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk again today about the miracle of the anointed oil, but let me share with you there's two miracle blessings in the anointed oil. I want to share with you about the oil and what it means so you can really take hold of this this morning. You know, oil in Matthew's 26, Matthew's 26, it talks about there's a rarity in oil. There's three types of oil, as we know. 
there's the frankincense, and there's the myrrh. And there's an oil that I was not aware of, dear ones. It's the spikenard, spikenard oil. And these oils, I say to you, were in biblical times. These oils were in, is used for comfort. Notice comfort, comfort. Can you imagine like the Holy Ghost comforts us? But the oil is also significant. These oil was also oh, used to comfort, glory to God, and to heal. So I say, if I need healing, I need only to anoint myself. If I need comfort, I only need to anoint myself and ask the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, to fix every solution that I have, every problem that it becomes a solution for me. I believe God is going to give us solutions to our problems. You know, I say all the time, we are the ones that are the problems, but God Almighty is, I say, is the solution. Glory to God. How many have stood for something and realized that God resolved that for you? I can testify to that. Glory to God for it. Again, we're talking about the oils. We knew, we, we know about frankincense and myrrh, don't we? Because we know it talks about when Jesus was born. But we're going to talk about more or less before his sacrifice because we know it is the resurrection uh, next week. But so we want to hit on that. Well, Pastor Brian, talk to us about betrayal of Judas Iscariot, how even when sometimes people don't treat you right and you are betrayed. Hallelujah. I like that because we need to only forgive and God will make a way out of no way for us when we can forgive, let go and let God because Jesus forgave us. Glory to God. But we're going to talk about these two miracle blessings of our Lord and Savior and why they're so significant today in our lives. And again, we're referencing these oils and why these oils are important. And that's why they're miracles. Frankincense and myrrh, as I mentioned, was doing the birth of Christ. They were given to him by the wise men. But we're going to talk today about the spikenor oil. The spikenor oil is rare and costly. It's a costly oil used by Mary of Bethlehem, who poured it onto Jesus' feet to anoint him, then dried them with her hair. Glory to God. That's called the spikenard oil. I didn't know that, saints. I was glad when God revealed it to me, but now I understand how important this oil is really is. It's a miracle, isn't it? Jesus anointed, when he was anointed at Bethlehem, this is what he did. This is Matthew 26. When Jesus was anointed in Bethlehem in the home of Simon the leopard, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar a very expensive perfume. When she poured it on his head, notice there's two miracles. One was when the oil or perfume, and there are synonymous saints of God, everything that we use women in makeup is oil-based. Creams, ointments, perfumes are all oil-based. Oil is in in an ingredients in these things that we use for our fate, for our skin, and any portion of. So then, again, I say to you, when Jesus was in Bethlehem, in the home of Simon Peter, the leopard, notice he was yet still a leopard. A woman came to him with an alabaster jar, a very expensive, I say, perfume. And what she poured on his head, notice, she anointed him. Oh, glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. She anointed him. And when she had poured this perfume on his head, as, she was, as he was reclining at the table, she anointed his head with this powerful anointed perfume. 
I know it was powerful and anointed because it was poured on our Lord and Savior, the Almighty God. Hallelujah. When the disciples then, they saw this, they were indignant. Why? Because you know the world don't understand when things are anointed, when they're powerful in the Lord, because he said he would confound the wise and the prudent and reveal to you the secrets and mysteries of God. So when the disciples saw this, they didn't understand. They were indignant about it. Why, they said. This is waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at the high price and the money given to the poor. Jesus answered them, as he always do, very wise and discerning, he says. He says to them, aware of this, Jesus says to them, why are you so bothering? Why are you bothering even with this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. How many know that? I'm telling you, saints, you know a lot of poor people. You know their situations. You know, I hate to admit, but my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. A lot of times, poor people, Jesus said they will always be with you because they are not willing to accept Christ the way they should. And you say, well, pastor, that's harsh. No, not really. Think about it for a minute. Even when you were poor, but now you're made rich because Christ, what, became old, although he was rich, he became poor, that you who were poor can now become rich. Oh, hallelujah. Just broke a powerful yoke because that's scriptural. But here again, your your spirit, your Holy Ghost that has come to you and caused you to walk in the Holy Spirit has taken away your poverty. And you say, Pastor, I'm still experiencing bills and what I, not expenses. Oh, hallelujah. Join the club. But here's the thing. God gives you peace. So that peace itself is a richness. God gives you the fruit of the Spirit. That fruit of the Spirit is rich. God tells you, he says, again, I say to you scripturally, he was rich but became poor that you who, I say, were poor is now made rich. You who were sick was now made healed. Come on, saints of God. I know some of you understand where I'm going and what I'm saying directly to your spirit. So we understand, he says, that the poor, those that don't know Jesus, those that didn't catch hold when you caught hold, oh, somebody, Oh, you're speaking to somebody who ministered to the prisoners for five years, and 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 the, these correctional centers were oh they were oh of hardened criminals, murderers even. And I went in and ministered for five years. You say how so, Pastor? Through the Holy Spirit, and their question is always, why are you where you're at, and I'm here? And I would say to them, it's the choices that we make. If you choose to be poor, saints, you are poor. So then the poor then will always remain there until they decide to, they decide to accept Jesus Christ and become rich. Why should they accept Jesus Christ, Pastor? The same thing I've been telling you over and over. Because Jesus, who was rich, became poor. That, that you who were poor now become rich. So when you accept Christ in your heart and mind and soul, body and spirit, then you become rich. Your spirit, man, begins to give you innovative ideas to become rich. Even when you think you don't have enough, you need only call unto God and he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. All of your needs, he says, according to his riches and glory. Jesus never worried about being poor. Hallelujah. We know that the man was rich because he walked around with a treasurer. Who does that unless you're rich, unless you got money? But even when he didn't have enough to feed the 5,000, he gave thanks to God. He believed God, and God supplied all of their needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody just got that. Somebody just got a yoke hugely broken. So Christ is all in this for you. We're talking about the double anointing. This is just one of the anointings that Christ shows us how he received the anointed oil. 
Aware of this, Jesus told them, he said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor will always you have with you. So I just reiterate that. But you will not always have me, Jesus says. This is why we fast, we pray, we seek God because we want him with us. When you don't feel Jesus is with you, you need only pray. Go in your prayer closet. Find a place where you and God can talk. You'll find that he will show up in your life and fix whatever it is that is troubling you. He says, he says to them, he says, when she poured this perfume, this wonderful anointed oil, when she poured this perfume on my body, she did a she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, God is blessing us. Truly, I tell you, where Ever this gospel is preached. Hallelujah. Is this not the gospel being preached to you today? Say, I receive it, Pastor. Say, I receive it in my heart, my mind, my spirit, and my soul. So then I tell you then the truth. Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Oh, glory to God. What a powerful anointed blessing. Is it not? Receive it. Receive it, receive it in this hand, because now you're getting ready to see another anointed miracle in the other hand. Oh, somebody, God says, I will bless the work of your hands. We pray that he established even the work of our hands with the beauty of his holiness. My God, that is so good. We've talked about how powerful your hands are. You need to anoint them with the oil. Glory to God. You need to be flowing in this miracle blessing of God. You need to have this oil. Oh, glory to God, in the name of Jesus, I say to you today, this is for you. Luke 7, Luke 7, then, let's talk about another anointed oil blessing. Now, notice Jesus himself was blessed by a woman with her alabaster jar. Mm, my God, my God. Oh, hallelujah. But let's go to Luke chapter 7 because I want you to get this. And let's take off, I say it, verse 36. Here's a woman. Here's a woman that was a sinful woman. She was a sinful woman. How many has been a sinful individual? Yes, you have. If you say you have not, then you are a liar. I'm here to tell you. The scripture tells you that. You need only repent, though, because God loves you. He's forgiven you. You need God casts your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. He places those sins behind you and behind him. That's why we sell the devil all the time. Get thee behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. Because what's in front of you are what? Miracles of blessing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And we haven't even really been able to get to true signs and wonders yet, but I'm going to share that throughout this season, how these signs will appear to you and Christ will be blessing you at the same time. Hallelujah. And they will become a wonder to not only you, but to others. Through you, you will draw witnesses to Christ. Through you, I say, because God is going to use you when you begin to apply the miracles, blessings of God. And the only reason the oil is significant is because it allows you to keep, to keep your blessing. It's anointed. And once God anoints you, the enemy can never take it back. Once you anoint it, when you're anointed, saints of God, you the enemy cannot ever defeat you in that. Why? Because you are anointed. Anointed means that it, the yoke is broke. Oh, somebody. Oh, when you break an egg yolk, guess what? It can never, it can never come back, right? Because the yoke is broke. You have to realize that. Glory to God. What we put, what, what, oh, somebody, let me help. What the Older generation or the patriarchs in the Bible, they had oxen or somebody, and they put what they called a yoke, which was a wooden brace around their necks to drive them to and fro, to cause them to move left or right and to go on. There was a heavy yoke 
a heavy burden upon them. And then when they were done using the animal, they would break the yoke off or take it off. Those types of yokes are not yours. Mm, Jesus Christ, thank you for telling us that. Those yokes are broken from you. You don't have heavy burdens. Oh, somebody, yes, you've got trials, tribulations. They were ordained, but if you do not have any trials or tribulations, how can you ever go through anything? How can you win a battle if you're not in it? Oh, God, that is so good. How can you ever win anything if you don't get into the game? Somebody, if you don't get into this thing of Christ, uh -huh, you can never really successful win the victory in your life. Oh, somebody, that is good. Oh, somebody, this is so wonderful. Thank you, Father God, for revealing these types of things to us. This is nuggets that we can use, I say to you. This is why we must pray. This is why we must seek God because he's revealing to us so much, so many miracles that we didn't know or aware that we have. You need to only aim big. Mm. Don't aim small. I, I say all the time, this is the only, the best analogy I can give you. Why are you believing God to pay an electric bill? Why don't you believe God to pay all of your bills? How, you say, will he do that, Pastor? He will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. So he will give you enough money to where you will not have room to receive it. You will always be able to pay not only your bills, but when you pay them every month, you will be smiling and laughing at the devil because you have so much. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So much wealth that those bills would be just an exciting time to pay them because you won't be worried or anxious for nothing because God has supplied more than enough. Remember, I say to you, the blessings, somebody say blessings of the Lord, of the Lord, make it you rich and then add no sorrow with it. Hmm, Jesus, somebody's going to get this. Let's go to Luke. I say Luke. Verse 36 then, the second anointing, the second anointing of the Lord. When, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to dinner, hmm, my God, Jesus didn't have a problem hanging out with folks. See, this, we, 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 we have a problem because we, we, we want to lift up, lift our nose and turn our nose down at people and, and all of those things. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't matter who you were, he loves you. He does. He, he loves us all. This is why I tell you all the time, and I've been repeating this, but it's worth repeating because I want this to be in your spirit, not of your flesh, because you can't do this in the flesh. What do I always say? Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. This is what Jesus did. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. And this is what you do in the spirit. Pray the prayer. Don't worry about it. God will fix it. You just pray the prayer. And watch God move. Whatever situation, that person, whatever it is, he will take care of it. This is a time to receive your double anointing. And remember, the way you receive your double anointing and your miracles is in forgiveness. Oh, let me stop there. Hallelujah. i got to share this with you. I always try to find movies that are leave you feeling good. I had the privilege to watch uh, this movie. I think it was uh, the one that Tom Cruise did, the latest one about uh, Maverick. I'm trying to think of the name, but it was the, 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 the Top Gun Maverick. One of the things that struck me in this particular movie was he stated and not only he stated it, but then the nautical commander stated it. Hallelujah. So they both stated this. And he said, he told the pilots, he told them, he says, in order to complete this mission, in order for us to have victory in this mission, he says, we have to have two miracles. My God, there has to be two miracles. The first miracle, we must hit the target with the first round. So in other words, they flew into a dangerous area. My God, they flew into battle. My God, they flew into the battle and they hit the target. They were trained, they had experience in doing so. 
he taught them. Oh, is this not like Jesus teaches us, gives us the experience, virtue, and patience to win? So the first miracle was to hit the target. The second miracle was to destroy the target. And he told them, he told them in training, he says there has to be two miracles. So that went on, that was spoken, and they hit the target. And then once they hit the target, the nautical commander who was on the, the carrier also stated, that's one miracle. And then when they, the second, the second so-called pilots came in to hit the second target. And that was the second miracle. The nautical commander who was on the carrier also repeated it. That's the second miracle. Needless to say, as the movie went on, it left you feeling pretty good because there was forgiveness. There was forgiveness at the end because there was a, there was a conflict between the individuals. And at the end, there was total forgiveness. And in that forgiveness, it left you feeling good because not only did the two miracles happen, but it happened because they persevered and they also forgave. Are you hearing me, saints of God? This is what I got out of the movie. It was so awesome to me. It was so awesome to me. I watched it three times. My God. Because it left you feeling in a good way. Why? Because there was two miracles that had to happen in order for them to succeed. So I say to you today, Jesus wants you to know two miracles that happened to him so that you can succeed as well. Notice the first miracle was pouring the oil on his head. Oh, let's look at the second miracle then, Pastor. So then this miracle, Jesus was anointed by a sinful person. Mm. Hallelujah. When one Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went, to, he went to the Pharisee's house and he reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's table. Notice this is different this time. And so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Hallelujah. Jesus answered them very significantly, always wise, discerning, powerful, awesome God. He says, Simon, I, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, Simon said. He said, two men owed money to a certain, hallelujah, money lender. <laughs> One owed him 500 denaros, denaros, and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. My God, notice the forgiveness of the Lord. Always forgiving. Even when he got on the cross, he was yet still forgiving. But yet he was performing miracles continually, constantly, and even today. Now, he says, he forgave them both. Now, which one of them, he asked Simon Peter, which one of them will love him more? Simon replied, I, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt was forgiven. You judge correctly, Jesus said to Simon Peter. You have answered totally correct. Then he turned and he turned toward the woman and he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house, you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. Mm, not stopped washing him. You did not put oil, oil, glory to God, oil on my head. Oh, Jesus. But she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But 
Whoever has been forgiven little loves little. If you forgive little, then you're going to love little. That's why it is good to forgive. We've preached about that and talked about it enough, haven't we? So we begin to really understand the love of Christ. The love of Christ is really forgiving. So anyone that has done you wrong in the past, it is in the past. You can't go back. So forgive. Let it go. Move forward. Let go. Watch him do mighty miracles in your life then. Are you not seeing the double anointing miracle here? First, his head was anointed with oil. Now his feet is anointed with oil. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Saints of God, your faith, then I say to you, have saved you. You need only now walk in peace in the spirit of the living God. Oh, saints, I bless you today as I have blessed you, hallelujah, in the word of God. I pray now that you understand the miracles of the anointed oil. Jesus has shown us how it was used and how it should be used. He's also told you about the comforting that it gives us, the healing power that's in it. We only thank you and we praise God for you that you have received not only this word, but have been edified and glorified by God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God in his powerful name and his holy name. And Jesus, glorious and powerful name. Hallelujah. El Carl, can you just bless us in our giving and let us know how God loves us through it. In Jesus' name, amen.